This is a reading of Wagon Train by Sidel Kramer, illustrated by Deborah Coggin Ray. Wagon Train. Wagon Train. It is an April morning. The year is 1848. A long, long line of wagons rumbles down the trail. Hundreds of people are on board. There are pioneers. They're leaving their old homes behind to start new lives. Every one of them is excited. They're moving west to California. The pioneers have heard great things about California. It is green and beautiful. The sun shines all year long. People can get land there for free. They might even get rich. But the trip is long and hard. California is 2,000 miles away. It takes six months to reach it. There is no road, just a dirt trail. The wagons have cloth covers to keep out wind, rain, and sun. The pioneers call them covered wagons. Far away, they look like sailboats against the sky. The wagon train moves slowly, just 10 or 15 miles a day. The trail is full of holes and bumps. The wagons sway and buck. Children hold on tight to the side. The wagons are heavy. Oxen pull them. Oxen walk slowly, but they're stronger than horses. Why do the wagons weigh so much? They're jammed with everything the pioneers need for their new lives. There are tables, chairs, beds, chests, wash tubs, and even clocks. Barrels and sacks are stuffed with sugar, flour, and beans. It's so crowded inside, there's hardly room for people. The wagon train comes to a stop. Ahead is a deep river. The water crashes and swirls. There's no bridge or ferry. How will the pioneers get across? They unpack the wagons. They take some of them apart. Everything is floated over on rafts. It will take hours to get to the other side and hours to put the wagons back together. Crossing the river is dangerous. Not everyone can swim. One raft suddenly slams into a rock and a young man falls off. The water sweeps him away. He's dragged under and drowned. But the wagons have to keep rolling. The pioneers must reach California before winter. Once snow starts to fall, Wagons can get stuck on the trail. It's hard to think of winter now. The sun is boiling hot. There are bugs everywhere. The pioneers are crossing the Great Plains. For weeks and weeks, the pioneers never see a hill or a tree. All they see is miles of grass and millions of buffalo. It takes six days to pass some herds. Terrible storms slow the pioneers down. One day, hailstones as big as eggs pound their heads. 
the very next night, lightning burns up a wagon. It rains so hard, the ground is like a muddy stream. One morning, strangers appear. Indians! The pioneers grab their guns. They're afraid. They have heard that Indians attack wagon trains. These Indians don't want to fight. They have come to trade. They trade deer meat and shoes called the moccasins for sugar and cloth. The chief lights a peace pipe and smokes it with the pioneers. Every night the wagons make a circle. The pioneers put up tents and gather in the animals. That way everyone is safer. The pioneers wake before sunrise. The wagons get back on the trail. Sundays are different. Sunday is a day of rest. Holidays are different too. On the 4th of July, there are horse races and shooting contests. The pioneers play music, sing, and dance till their feet are sore. The wagons leave the plains behind. They come to huge mountains called the Rockies. The Rockies are easy to cross. There's a pass right through them. But on the other side, the pioneers aren't sure where to go. They know whole wagon trains sometimes get lost here. Are they still on the right trail? Yes, other wagon trains have been this way. How do they know? They see rocks with writing and sticks with notes poking out from them. That's how pioneers leave news behind. Chests and chairs are scattered on the ground. Pioneers have tossed them out to make their wagons lighter. There's even a piano standing in the dust. The pioneers head into the desert. It's 110 degrees by noon. The sun burns their skin. The heat cracks their lips. Dust covers them like a blanket and sticks in their throat. Worst of all, there's al they're almost out of water. There are just a few barrels left. Can they find a water hole soon? Two days go by. Then they see something sparkling up ahead. It's a desert spring. Pioneers and animals rush to it and gulp the fresh water down. At the end of the desert, more mountains stand in the way. There's no pass through them, but once the pioneers get across, they'll be in California. The wagons start climbing. It gets colder and colder. Everyone tries to hurry but the trail is very steep. The pioneers must help the oxen up the mountains. It's even harder going down. The wagons don't have any brakes. If they start to roll fast, there is no way to stop them. So the pioneers lower the wagons with ropes. The pioneers have made it. They are in California at last. The land is green and beautiful. The sun is shining. Now their new lives can begin. Wagon trains help America grow from coast to coast. From 1840 to 1870, 250,000 pioneers move west on wagons. They travel on different trails. No wagon train is the same size. Some are small as four families. Others are gigantic, five miles long. 
When railroads cross the country, the wagons stop rolling. But the tracks of their wheels are still in the ground. People come from everywhere to see them and to remember the pioneers. The end. This was a reading of Wagon Trains.